bah, we walk alone. And yeah, you- and we're back. We are live with the podcast. I don't know what episode this this is because it's going to be pre-recorded later. And whenever you're hearing this is the day we released it. So we got Luke, we got Steve. We're talking Elimination Chamber 2011. The well, pre-WrestleMania 27 trip. You got half your wish here. You're, you wanted all four members, but uh, you got exactly half that. So, there you go. <laughs> How is don't there worry, four members? There was only three of us. Oh, no, I don't mean the trip. I mean uh, the OG click. Oh, we're almost there. We're, we're just almost. picking up pieces week by week, and then all <laughs> of a sudden, one week, bam. Oh, you'll see. Well, Shock dropped that episode. He'll be like, well, the click's here. I can't uh, believe we were able to get Scott Hall out of the drunk tank to get him on the podcast uh, the other day. Scott Ooh, Hall. Doesn't get out all that often. You know, hey, it's Miguel, yo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Well, that was, that was a pre book guest, okay? That was a pre book uh, guest. Yeah, we paid him $175. That was his going rate. I said, Is there any way you can make it $150? And he was like, No. And then I said, Fine, $175. But I only gave him $174. So the joke's on him. As soon as he was gone, you took the, uh, the, the PayPal back. You were like, Oh. You know what's funny? Yeah. Miguel apologized for going too long. I know, I know. What I was are you talking about. I know. I said I was like, dude, like it's literally just recording a Skype call. Like it's it's not even that big of a deal. Um, Miguel currently has the highest ever retention rate we have on any podcast. So that's, that's, that's your chance to them. So Miguel, Miguel winning the clip. They hear, they hear Luke and they bail out. Oh, he's not doing the clown. I'm out of here. You know what? I don't want to hear anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy right there. Yeah. Oh, All right. So, Elimination Chamber 2011. How did this whole trip start? Because this was like, I seem, I felt like watching the videos is just random. It just happened to happen. Like, Breach was going, and then all of a sudden Luke was going. I would say this was like on the road. This was shit. Was this before 27 or before 28? Before 27. Damn. Uh, okay. Well, just basically what happened was uh, Miguel. Uh, on Skype one night, just said, hey, I looked it up. Uh, flights aren't that much, kind of like how he said that the uh, 29 trip came together. And he said I could fly uh, to Sacramento uh, for like, about, like 50, 60, 70 bucks, something like that. And uh, we can get tickets that were still available on Ticketmaster, and uh, we can go. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'll get the day off. You fly here, I'll pick you up. We'll drive to Oakland. And uh, we'll be good to go. And um, that, that's just basically how it go, how it went. And I think we extended an invitation. And Luke was like, I am 100% all in. And um, as the trip was like being pieced together, uh, somehow I think Miguel was worried about the 27 trip. And he bowed out. But uh, I think Luke just, we didn't have tickets. So Luke just decided he wanted to come, so he, he stayed in with the trooper. Yeah, I um I kind of had a full uh, weekend there. I actually went to the uh, post elimination chamber. Was the two twenty one eleven Raw, which was infamous for the Undertaker return that set up the um, match at WrestleMania twenty seven between Undertaker and Triple H. Everyone thought Sting was going to, uh, to debut in WWE. Which is the only reason why I uh, made the drive to Fresno, and uh, I got fifth row ringside, and you can see me getting my sting mask on camera quite a few times. But uh, yeah, I had a pretty what busy. Did you get in your sting mask? Like so you're wearing one? Tell us your itinerary, like like what you did that. Like, tell us the main thing. Like when you were in a plane or in a car, tell us what you did. That's pretty like that's pretty like all out. I'm trying to. I, I'm pretty sure I flew up to you, right up to Sacramento. I think I picked you up Sunday morning because you came home. We made two videos, then we drove to Oakland. I think you flew here that day. Okay. You, yeah. Yeah. You, I, you flew here that morning. And I stayed on Steve's couch, and uh, well, also I think I flew back to San Diego. And then I went, <laughs> I went home to get my car, and then drove five hours north to Fresno, back pretty much towards where Steve was in Northern California. 
and then uh, did Raw or did Raw. Went to Raw <laughs> and then went back down home. Uh, and that's all I remember from it. But yeah, it was a pretty uh, hectic. Wait, week there you drove five hours after Raw. So like, what time did you get home? Like two in the morning. Something like that. Yeah. I remember he called and we talked to him on Skype to keep him awake. I don't remember that. I do. I do. This is like, what, almost 10 years ago. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, oh, no, we also watched, I remember, we were in your living room watching TNA. And I remember we watched Hernandez. He border tossed, uh, I'd say, I want to say Doug Williams. And it was really nasty. We kept rewinding it and playing it over and over and over again. <laughs> that was like the big bump that happened that weekend. That's all I got for you. <laughs> That's it, dude. But, um, I, I, I thought it would be this long thing. Um, but, as well, like, why, why, why'd you fly in like just one day? Why didn't you just be like, hey, I'm going to come like a, like Saturday, hang out? You know what? I think my – I'm trying to think back to my – honestly, I didn't know what the topic was until you said so. So no one prepped me for this. But um, I think I wanted okay. to go up there – because I had never seen an Elimination Chamber match live, and that was one of the stipulations that I wanted to check off the list. So I think that was the main motivation um, for going up there, because uh, I already had the, the Raw in 221.11. I was, like, fitting the Chamber into that uh, whole hectic schedule there. But um, I, I believe that was the main motivation. That was nice to check it off the list, and I haven't seen a Chamber match since, so there you go. So That's where I wanted to go. I mean, I, 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 that, that, that's what I wanted to see. I didn't care really about anything else that was on the show, but seeing the chamber, I mean, you only get so many chances to really see that. It's like, you really want to chase that around the country? Like, is you like checking things off your wrestling list when it's only three hours away? You, you drive the three hours instead of like having to fly somewhere to go see it. And that was like the original chamber too. That wasn't like this new garbage. That was like, you know, the, the OG gigantic chamber. So that's even better because they don't have that anymore, obviously. I remember so. thinking it was uh, it was a lot smaller in person from what I remember. I remember the whole I... build up to Miz and Lawler, and you guys were making me convinced that Lawler was going to win the title. I thought he was going to. It made sense to me. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was honestly pretty cool to see Jerry Lawler in a WWE title match. That's uh, not too many people can say that <laughs> they've seen that live. A TLC match. Didn't he do that on Raw like the next night or two weeks later or something like that? I have no clue. Uh, but so um, was, since I'll talk at once, go ahead, Breach. So uh, as as the trip like got close, me and Luke bought a ticket in the hundreds. Uh, we we had we had pretty good seats, and then I I don't remember having Zach as a part of the trip for a long time but we were like pretty open with uh the fact that um we were gonna go we would talk about it on videos i don't know when zach came into the skype calls because uh what's gonna come up in a minute zach was still kind of young and is in high school i hope at that time and um <laughs> uh, he he wouldn't be on the calls a lot but one day we found out that zach only lived like three streets over from my house like he, he lives really 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 close like one of those things that makes you like realize the world's not as big as you really kind of think it is especially with like youtube stuff but um we found that out on a skype call talking about howard's donut and he kind of said hey if i get a ticket will you take me with you and i was like well yeah because honestly i thought zach was older than he was and that i thought that somebody would know where he was at the time and so he bought his own ticket, and uh, we gave him a ride, and, and that's pretty much how that came together. I think it happened, like, kind of last minute, though. I think that he said he wanted to come. Yeah, it was last minute, and he was 15 at the time. Oh, shit. <laughs> Did you know that? No. I didn't and know. <laughs> I was 19, I believe, so... I mean, <laughs> he seems a lot older than he, he like in the videos, especially like when I when I watched that video, like it seemed like he was like, you know, around the same age, like as Luke, no offense, Bridge. And so like it seemed like it was just like they all like it all like worked together. But yeah, I mean, when I found, I think it was like a couple of years, like a couple, I don't even know, like before the 31 trip, I found out like how close in age, um, like, you know, like he was like the closest to me. 
of like the group at the time. So like it was kind of like crazy going back to that chamber like you know trip and watching those videos. Um, like you know, it's a, it's just one of those crazy like you know crazy things. Like hey, like there's a lot you know younger people that are watching the videos, and there's probably you know the same thing going on now with people where it's like so new people joining. The, the funny story was Breach getting sick. That didn't even happen. All I remember is like, I remember you guys joking about it in the video. And then I remember, I think you talked about it like later on. You're like, oh, I threw up in the parking lot. Uh, I felt, I woke up that, that day to go pick up Luke at the airport. And I didn't really feel that good. Uh, like, but I kind of like shook it off. And I really, by the time I picked Luke up from the airport, and we came back to my house. We made a couple of videos. I didn't feel bad anymore. But um, it wasn't bad enough for me not to go to a wrestling show. But I did really remember feeling bad that morning. Like, not good at all. I don't get sick that, that often. But somehow, when we got to in and out and we got in the drive through lane, I just felt like I had to take a huge dump all of a sudden and it just was like i gotta go now to the point where i got out of the car and i left luke and zach to drive through the drive-thru which i thought would not be a problem at all and so i went to the bathroom and it was just one of those moments when i just couldn't go so i was like fuck dude i don't know what the hell's going on with me and then halfway between Halfway between the, the the bathroom and the car, once I got in the parking lot, I threw up next to a tree. <laughs> Not <laughs> but a little bit. Like, uh, just, oh, look at that. And I thought that was it, and I was done. And then by the time I got back to the car, Luke was struggling to drive the car in the drive-thru, and people were wondering why the hell he was not moving and the line was moving. Um uh, <laughs> I got back in the car, started making fun of Luke. I forgot about it. Um, but because I wasn't feeling that great, I wanted to eat, but I didn't want that much. So I got a grilled cheese sandwich, which I don't think many people know that In-N-Out has. It's on like the no. secret menu. Yeah, and I yeah. got a milkshake, which I think the milkshake did me in to the point where like once we started driving and we got closer to the, par- uh, the stadium, but we were in like the traffic line, I threw up the milkshake. Oh, okay. I think I threw up the milkshake out of the car. I don't think I threw up in the car or in the cup or anything like that. No, I think you, I... Opened, you opened the door and you leaned half of your body out and <laughs> spewed all over the pavement. But uh, before that, I had trouble moving your car because <laughs> you put on the emergency brake, and I had no idea you had done that because normal people don't do that. And Everybody does that? No, I'm not done. And so you put on the emergency brake and you went inside and I'm like pressing the gas. I'm like, fucking thing is stuck. And um, then I looked down and realized it was engaged. And, and not so much. I think I'd gotten my driver's license five months prior to this. So maybe that had something to do with it, too. But <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Jeez. <laughs> it all comes out now. That's crazy. Was that like the first time that um, like you got. OK, so obviously, um, Luke, you had. 26 uh wrestlemania 26 hanging out with miguel um but like was that the first time you went to someone else's like house from youtube like um you know what i mean actually it was and yeah like i said i slept on steve's couch and uh yeah that that definitely was kind of the first trip to somebody's house you know now that i never thought of it that way until you said it yeah because i'm just you know i just figured like um like breach was that your first time meeting up with like someone from youtube or was there some like another like a time before well didn't they hang out at summerslam did that happen i don't know um yeah summerslam 2010 oh okay so then that would have been the first time. okay but no one stayed at anyone's house there no but yeah okay so that was so summerslam 2010 was the first time that like okay that makes sense I feel like that vlog. I feel like that vlog. Like at the time, because I didn't watch. Um, like I followed you guys. Like I followed Breach pretty much from the start, I guess. So it was like it was kind of fun seeing you guys. Like when worlds collide, I was like, damn. Like I wish. At the time, I was like, I wish I had friends that I could do like th- that with. You know, 
And especially because that was such like a random event. Like it wasn't WrestleMania. Like it wasn't like a big like to do. It was just a random like chamber event. Oh, the chamber one. I thought yeah, that yeah. SummerSlam one. The SummerSlam was a funner trip. Fun. But because we didn't really know. Well, I can at least say I didn't know what the hell I was doing uh, to make a to make a video. And like what Ravi said in his um uh in his in his uh interview the other day with you guys, he was talking about how like Justin coming on the trip like changed the game by him like taking all the pictures and that's what you remember. Like that SummerSlam trip, we made a picture where we took all of our pictures posing with the Mattel like figure thing and we made the the uh mm. uh the fuck 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 what's it what we used Freebird. They call each other something back. The Freebird, yeah, we made the three, the Freebird three pack, and like besides that, I have a picture I took of Luke and and Miguel walking down like the strip. Yeah. That's like the only pictures we have at all from that That's whole. That's crazy. Thing. Not so. Because now yeah. you, I mean, you can't go like a minute without someone taking a picture on a trip. You gotta take a, take a little selfie, you know. Yeah. Get that down. Hey, we're That's moving locations. Video. New picture. That's a forgotten piece of, uh, <laughs> I guess, click history, because without Ravi, there was three of us, so then we're like, okay, who's a trio in wrestling, and I thought of the Freebirds, so I'm like, okay, without Ravi, we're the Freebirds, and that's uh, that was like a little thing for a couple of years. You made a Titan Tron, I remember. That's right, I made a Freebirds Titan Tron with uh, the Freebirds music video and all that shit. Yeah, which I own. But also, uh, to bring this back around to the Elimination Chamber trip... Uh, I remember also, God, I was running on, I think, little to no sleep around that time. And I just so, pre, pre-mania trip for you. Right, and that's another thing to take into account, too, is that this was just a couple months before uh, Georgia in 2011. So, God, I, we had a really busy year. And I think we did SummerSlam in 2011 as well. So it was a very busy year. But um, I remember... I feel like that was the year when I was like, I need to make some friends and go on these trips. Because, <laughs> like, I'm missing out, you know? Yeah, that I had somebody. I mean, just to segue for a second, I remember um, some guy came up to me in New Orleans a couple of years ago and said, like, our videos kind of inadvertently inspired him to to want to do that and get friends together and go on trips and stuff. And it's like yeah. I I had no idea that we were just filming shit and putting it up on YouTube, and it inspired a lot of people to want to go out and and do what we did. But dude, um, like honestly, every time, um, like I mean, I'd say um, this kind of started like late 2011 into 2012 like 2011 my freshman year of high school when i went to like my like my homecoming football game like i brought my camera to make like a a video just because like i like all my friends are getting together in this one spot and because i saw you guys doing you know making videos on wrestling trips i was like man like this like this like such a cool thing they're having so much fun i want to do that with my friends and it turned into us like you know like hitting each other and doing wrestling moves for the entire football game, and like every time in like 2012 when like um, like me and my friends would get together like whether we would go, you know I don't know to like the bowling alley or to like you know wherever like go to even like, we all get together and like pretty much walk up and down the, the road um, and go store to store just because we had nothing to do I'd still turn that into a video because it was like. Well, I mean, we're all hanging out together. Let's make a video about it. We're all wrestling fans. Like, so it's literally like, you know, it, it's literally like you guys started this whole thing. And, you know, there might be someone who like did it before. But like for me, that was like seeing you guys do it. I was like, I got to do this in not only wrestling trips, but just in general. Yeah, it's well, and what was to bring it back to the to the chamber again. That's what's so fun about these trips is that you can make them kind of spontaneous, and and that's kind of what I did. I jumped on like, hey, let's let's do it, okay. Mm-hmm. And that's what wrestling kind of brings you together that way, where you can just fucking make a trip out of it and have all these little adventures, and that's what's so addicting. Uh, many people on the outside they don't really get it, especially non wrestling fans, where it's like, well, why do you spend all this money and go on all these trips? It's because of just the memories, the adventures, hanging out with your friends. It's like the wrestling is what brought us there, and that's great too. But you just have to – it's something you have to experience and feel, and then you can look at somebody and go, okay, I get it. But a lot of people don't, so it's kind of – and pro wrestling is the same way too, right? Why do you like that shit? Well, you have to kind of live it and know it and understand it. Then you'll get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But – Pretty much 
most most of the trips you don't remember the show. You remember like the in between, anyways. Right. Like the show yeah. is kind of secondary. Cena and the Big Show standing in the pod right in front of our seats the whole freaking match. <laughs> ah. That's random, but I wanted to go, uh, rewind a little bit and talk about cutting a video in the Wrestle Center with Steve. Oh, um, dude. Oh! <laughs> that was something I, because that had iconic been. Iconic moment in the YWC. Like when worlds collide. I really did feel like Rick Rude coming to Nitro, but um, <laughs> it, <laughs> it was, uh, was kind of interesting. Again, everything's smaller in person, right? Giggity. But. Um, so I went in there, and then uh, Steve's like, hey, you should hit me with a chair or something. I'm like, oh, of course. God. I was like, oh, shit, because he had the steel folding chair there. I'm like, <laughs> okay. But I'm like, you know, he's 70 or 71 at the top. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to lay it in. So I give him the worst chair shot, I think, in the history of everything, if you go back and watch yes. that. But. Yes, it is. Because I didn't want to, um, I don't want him a week later to go. Hey, my lower back hurts. <laughs> you know, I can't I... come meet today. What are you doing? What about the garage door opener? <laughs> oh, I, uh, that thing kept getting in the way. Like days later, Bobby made fun of it. Made fun of the chair shot or the garage door thing. The garage door thing <laughs> hitting your head the whole video, and then yeah. you sell it every time. I'm just <laughs> talking it off my prediction video. <laughs> Well, I remember I didn't like the uh, the first take that we did. And I'm like, yeah, let's do another one. He's like, you're like, nope, one take. That's all we do around here. I'm like, ah, okay. True. It's still, <laughs> still to the day. The video. You want to shoot it again? It to take like an hour to upload and the videos and, and the show starts in like three. <laughs> well, I didn't. I'm a perfectionist, so I wanted to do another one. But you said, nope, that's it. So breach, if I if I come to Sacramento, am I going to see the same setup in your garage, or has it changed since? I cut that table up and I threw it in the trash. Oh, dude, we could have made that into relics, dude. We could have sold that, like, you know, you know how much money. Like, if you if you broke that up into little pieces, like you could have sold like that for like fifty dollars a piece. Man, that's history. You and it could have been, for $50. you know, what? No one's buying that for fifty dollars. And well, if you would have never, if you would have never like threw it away, who knows what would have happened? The guy who bought the Undertaker dirt. Yeah, just <laughs> bought the Undertaker. I dirt. didn't buy the plaque. <laughs> Wait, you bought dirt? I would buy the poster before I buy the plaque. I'm not buying that plaque. Unbelievable. He doesn't even want to talk about it because he's so ashamed. But <laughs> I just remember like G Wiz box like in the background, and I remember. Um, like, it was just one of those things where when you realize it was a garage, like, Breach, why? Like, why were you, like, out in the garage? Like, did you not have, like, your office at the time? No. I just, just walked away. Wall up before come back Come back into the room. Come what back. Oh, in, in the room during a podcast. <laughs> Taking a picture of the G-Wiz box. Calm down. <laughs> I am calm. <laughs> but, um, no, because I didn't get that until they put the wall up. Oh. Uh. <laughs> We made the back of the house into the bedroom. Uh, so I guess I'm sleeping, or I guess I'm laying down right now where Luke Cage once laid in my house. Wow. Just on, on my bed instead of the couch. You almost, never mind. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, I never I never knew why you were always in your garage. So that, I mean, that, that makes sense now. <laughs> like, I think, like, I've known you for, I don't even know how many years now. Maybe like seven years. And I, I just never knew why you were in your garage versus, like, your office. And then I remember when you moved into your office, and you had all these plans, like you had all those bookshelves that were going to be filled with DVDs and wrap around the room and stuff like that. And um, I mean, that was like that was a big thing when you moved from the garage to the uh, to your office where you're at now. Heck yeah. Uh, but well, after uh, Steve hurled all over the uh, the road, we we went to go park at the what was it the the Orca Arena? Oracle. Or- Oracle. And uh, the guy. <laughs> We pull up to the guy and he goes thirty five dollars and he oh Steve goes whoa and then the like the, the security guard he's like whoa like he had a shocked look on his face I, I I've never had anyone react like this before I said what are you talking about thirty five dollars I don't even think oh I- that was I forgot about that meme and then he said something that he would get me tooed for today which I will not repeat but uh, yeah thirty five is a ridiculous amount though it's like I more than the show. <laughs> That is pretty ridiculous. But Steve paid it all, so there you go. Yeah. I always pay it all. That's how it works. Yeah, not really. 
<laughs> oh, and you want to talk about? I don't think we're going to do a rundown of the card because it's not worth running down. No, it's not. But post show, I remember. <laughs> no, no, we got to talk about mid show when I got that text from Zach's uh, mom. No. Oh, oh that's son, right. Where her son was. Yeah, you were having an affair. Oh, that. Um, <laughs> Zach didn't tell his mom where he was going. Mm-hmm. And his texts me mid-show. And is like, I need you to have my son call me. You were the last person that he texted. I know he's with you. Fuck. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to get up. I walk all the way around the arena. I, don't, I, I know I missed the Trish Stratus return. Doing <laughs> And I think Booker T came out or something like that. But um, he'll walk all the way over to Zach. I'm like, your mom wants you to call her now. <laughs> and he's like, no. And I'm like, no, no, I, you, you, you're going to want to call home now. And he's like, oh, I will later. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to walk all the way back. And then the whole rest of the show, I'm just looking at my phone, waiting for his mom to text me back. Like, it is like. I don't know, man. If I could have took the battery out of my phone and threw it in the ring, I would have done to just, like, make that go away. And then oh. we, dro- we drove him home and dropped him off. I dropped him off, like, a block away. I went nowhere near that house. <laughs> oh, just because? <laughs> but the, um, the running gag of the whole trip was this GPS device called a TomTom. I don't even know you can get these anymore. <laughs> Nope, it's on your phone now. It's probably an ancient art of... Oh, okay, it's an app now. But it was, this was an actual fucking gimmick screen that you had to buy and uh, back when they did that for GPSs. And yeah. so post-show, he turns this thing on, he fires it up, and he uh, puts whatever in there. So then maybe like 30 minutes in, I'm looking around, and we're just going up and down these humongous hills on these streets, and I'm... Going, you know, I used to live in San Francisco. That reminds me. Uh, this reminds me a lot of uh, San Francisco. And I look to him. I'm like, we're in San Francisco, aren't we? And he, <laughs> yep, without looking at me. So he went. I don't know if you guys are um, smart to Northern California or not, but mm-hmm. Oakland and San Francisco are, you know, not Pretty that far close. away. Yeah, <laughs> maybe about an hour apart. <laughs> the way that we're supposed to go, though, because. This came up on the 31 trip when we drove to San Francisco uh, for the day. Like the first mm-hmm. day we were there, it was uh, Ravi, Miguel, me, and Zach. We left Santa Clara. We drove to San Francisco. And when we spent the day in San Francisco on the way back to Santa Clara, it took us by the Oracle Arena because I had to live these jokes again. <laughs> I think that's okay. honestly the way we're supposed to go. But I think I just I don't know. I I trust the top Tom. He got us home. <laughs> yeah, you took us the complete opposite way of where we needed to go. I, and, uh, but, told you. I think that's the way you're supposed to go. Yeah, whatever. But it was uh, a nice sightseeing. It was nice to be back in my former home. So thanks, I guess. <laughs> it all works out, you know. It turned yeah. into a joke. I- guy drive some people around and all of a sudden you become a bad guy because you're not going with what they want to go. <laughs> That's the arena. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty far away. Yeah, that's... Oh, this is something I forgot to mention. I was trying to remember all that happened that month with me. I was at the February 14th Raw a week before, or six days before the Chamber, <laughs> where The Rock came back. Look at this guy. Look at this guy doing the, 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 the loop, I guess. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it was February 14th in Anaheim, February 20th in Oakland. And then February 21st in Fresno for Raw. Did I go to SmackDown before the Chamber? And that's where I sat front row, or is that the next year? What year did Cody fight uh, Rey Mysterio? That was 28, right? 27. No, oh, then I went to cham- the Chamber and sat front row the day, the, the, the Monday, no, it would be the Tuesday, the Tuesday before the Chamber. And then I, um, what did I do? I, um... <laughs> I met Mario that day. That's what I did. Oh, yeah, your current husband, yeah. But, um... What? 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 No, nothing. What? But, yeah, it was, uh... God, a very eventful year, 2011. That was, uh... 
2010 really kind of kicked it off, though, man. That whole decade was really the beginning of these trips and just these memories. And I had maybe – I went to three events the decade before. Uh, as we talked about, No Way Out 04. I went to a house, a SmackDown house show in 04. And then in 09, I went to a SmackDown ECW house show. And that, that was it for that whole decade. So this was really the, the beginning, the origins of these trips and – God, they've just brought me and all of us countless memories, man. Thanks for running off that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And uh, now we have to uh, do it all again this decade. Well, no, because we're off to a shitty start. We can't do anything. What are you talking about? Me, Mike, Breach, Ravi, Tommy. We got one in already the for trip the decade. Of the century, Two months dude. in. Two yeah, months in, we got one in. For the year, that's good. The hey, one that... Remember, um, okay, like, I, I think that one of the reasons why the day in the life video from the chamber is so good is, is because that is the first time that I think Luke held a flip cam and he fell in love <laughs> with the flip cam. Mm-hmm. He started like reenacting the Scott Hall videos. <laughs> Last call, Scott Hall. Um, uh, I know him and Zach were doing. I, I haven't seen that one in a little bit, but that, I, I mean, like, because I was driving the whole time with mm-hmm. the thirty-second themes blaring. Um, I think that um, the Luke did all of the camera shooting uh, mm-hmm. on that one because Luke before then he didn't have like a video camera. He only had a camera camera, and um, he only had one memory card, and he would. <laughs> He would film something and leave it on the memory card, take it with him on his next trip so he could, like, watch those moments and live them again. And any time he wanted to take another picture or make another video, he would have to choose which video he was going to delete to make the new video. This is true. And this actually happened to me. Um, It was the February 14th Raw, again, to go back to that. I ran into actor Daniel Roebuck. Uh, he was in Randy Orton's new movie at the time. People, you, Many people don't know who this guy is, but he was in that Disney movie, Quince. He was in The Fugitive and U.S. Marshals, Disorganized Crime. I had, I had known him, but like I was so sorry. What's that? Nothing, son. <laughs> I'm a movie buff. Uh, but <laughs> So like it was one of those things where I was like, I wasn't sure. So I had to ask him, sir, are you an actor? Because <laughs> I didn't oh, know his name. Yeah. Oh. And he goes, yes. And then I'm like, okay, can I get a picture with you, blah, blah, And so, like, what Steve said, like, I tried to get a picture with the guy, and then it said memory full. So I'm, like, scanning through, like, oh, God, what what do I delete so I can get a picture with this guy? And he's, like, looking down at me, and I'm telling him, like, hey, I got to clear some memory. Hold on a second. Then he's, like, telling his wife, hold on, he's deleting some memory off his camera, and then we're going to take a picture. (laughs) He wants a picture with me just as much as I want a picture with him, I guess. But then... uh, we got the picture, and you can – I'll put it up somewhere. He's holding his uh, Pepsi behind his back. He doesn't want it to be in the shot. And then he said uh, – he told me about working with Randy Orton, and he said, tell your friends about the movie and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, and that was the end of that. But that was a little fun exchange with Mr. Daniel that Roper. just hurt my brain just thinking about the fact that, like, you have to delete something because you, you were – like because the iPhones weren't popular at the time. Like I that's was just, just as embarrassed and cringing you know, just as much. You know how many dreams I've had of like I'm meeting a wrestler, <laughs> and like I take a picture and my phone's not turning on, the camera's not loading, it's like black screen, the pictures yeah. are crap. I have this reoccurring dream slash nightmare once a month, and I wake <laughs> that's up. Crazy. <laughs> well, I, I'll take it one step further. You ever oh extended? You ever extended your hand to a wrestler and they were reluctant to shake it? (laughs) No, 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 no. I've always looked pretense. Like, if I'm in line, I I, I try to figure out what they're doing. Well, see, I I do that too, but I was like, okay, I'm getting my handshake. Because to me, meeting somebody back then anyway, it was handshake, picture, or autograph. Yeah. So I was going to get all three or try to get all three. I was in line to meet Christian at WrestleMania 27 access and he was not putting the Sharpie down in his right hand. <laughs> he was not putting it down. That's your own fault because you were hanging out with Blackford taking pictures with his belts and uh, you were, you were wasting time back there. 
Well, that's beside the point. But I was like, okay, I want to shake Christian's hand so I can get a complete experience. So I extend my hand. He looks at me like I got two heads. And he's and he shakes my hand with the Sharpie in his hand. <laughs> hey, hold, hold on. I think this... There's a like there's a statue of limitations. It's like past. That that trip was like ten years ago, right? No. Nine. Nine? Okay, yeah. how about this? I can protect somebody. All right, here we go. Luke, isn't that the line where somebody was letting people cut them in line because he wanted to keep talking to the security guard? <laughs> I have no memory of that. You don't remember that at all, really? That was the thing. Like, uh, you guys go ahead. I'm going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me and her are talking. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Dude, go ahead. You guys go ahead. I, I was surprised. Maybe you weren't in, maybe because you were with Blackford, you were behind. Oh, me oh wait a minute. Person. Why are you making it sound like he came up to us and was chatting with us? I wasn't, you're acting like I was seeking him out. We were just bosom buddies and hanging out the whole fucking time. <laughs> You guys were you were holding his belt. You were taking photos. You were uh, no, 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 no. well. He was he listens to the podcast, so he'll comment. <laughs> well, Mister Black, yeah, yeah. listen. Yeah, yeah, he'll back it up. Let us, yeah, like, Luke was my biggest comment. fan. No, 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 no. He what he did was he took my camera, he threw his belt on my shoulder, and he pulled an Austin Powers and went, "Yeah, baby, yeah." And he was like, you know, trying to get shots of me with the belt, and you know, I, I put it up on a Throwback Thursday or something. It's a cool picture, and. <laughs> <laughs> Ravi and I look painfully young in the, in that photo, but anyway. There you go. There's a good throwback there. Well, picture to you post on your Instagram. Well, I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end on this. You're talking about cringy situations. You talked about the Christian one. Um, <clears throat> one time, I had a friend that went up to me to say a wrestler of all time. He was so uh, scared that um, he went for the picture right away, and the wrestler stuck. That's his it for the out. podcast. It's been fun. <laughs> and he just... well, hold on. What happened? I I don't want to know. <laughs> So the wrestler stuck his hand out, and, and like I was watching this happen, and you could see the wrestler stuck his hand out, but the picture's taken. And in the picture, the hand is just kind of like on the table, but it definitely extended out for a handshake. And uh, it's just just a funny thing. What and... did that sting? <laughs> All right, well, well uh, we'll see you next no, time. Now I have to That's... defend myself. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. I'm Bye. We brought up the Hogan hug. That's oh. how you meet a wrestler. You go in and you get the hug. And on that note, you get the hug ski, not the we'll shake talk. ski. We'll talk. I, I, yeah. Hey, I got the hug ski. Then I looked at him and I was like, we got to shake hands. And then he t- and then when we were done, he stuck the hand out for another handshake. And I look at him. I shook him off like the Hulkamaniac I am. And I went in for another hug. Two hugs. <laughs> Two hugs. And you can't do that anymore because obvious reasons. All right, well, thank you guys for coming on. And uh, you'll probably be back on soon. So we'll talk to you again after a while.